Chag Kosher V'Sameach. This is David Mordechai, and happy Passover, that time of year when we relive the exodus from Egypt and eat kosher for Passover pastries made from the best styrofoam. It's actually not that bad. Then again, I've been eating matzah for five days, so I fooled myself into thinking that chocolate-covered cardboard actually tastes good. You see, on Passover, Jews are not allowed to eat chametz. Exactly what the definition of chametz is, we'll get into later, but some examples include bread, pasta, cookies, cakes, which means on Passover, we Jews have to resort to eating this, fake cookies, which, as far as I can tell, are made of asbestos and fiberglass. But it's because God told us not to, so I can live with it. What I can't live with is the extra burden that the Ashkenazim place on themselves in the form of kitniot. What are kitniot? I'm not really sure myself. I, I thought I knew, but now I'm not sure. See, chametz has a definite definition to it. If you take any of the five grains, wheat, oat, barley, rye, or spelt, mix it with water, let it sit for 18 minutes or more before cooking it so that the way the grain has time to ferment, and you got chametz. It's a very simple definition. Actually, it's very complicated, but it's definitely set. It's a set defined definition. Kitniot, on the other hand, I don't I don't even know if there is a definition for it. Ask any Jew. He won't be able to tell you what the definition of kitniot is. He'll just be able to list you some examples. I mean, how did the whole kitniot thing get started anyway? Well, it got started in the Middle Ages when crop rotation became a thing. In a field, one year you'd plant wheat and the next year you'd plant beans, which meant that the equipment that was used to harvest wheat would sometimes also be used to harvest beans, which meant that wheat and beans could get mixed in with each other, which meant in a sack of beans you might have some wheat in there, and what if water gets on it, then it's hummus! And then we're all gonna die! No, we're not going to die, but it would be a bad thing. So what do we do about this new problem that beans and chametz could be mixed together? Well, the Svardim, those wily Svardim, came up with a devious solution. Wash the beans. Yes, it was that simple. Just wash the beans and they'll be fine. Now there's no chametz on them. It'll be great. But the Ashkenazim, no, they decided that didn't work out for them because it was too much of a hassle. Which I can understand. Cleaning up for Passover can be a hassle. So they said, never mind, we'll just take the kit, you know, put it in the chametz with everything else and don't worry about it. What I want to stress here is that the prohibition on kitniot was not a mitzvah midioraita. It was not a divine commandment. It wasn't even an edict of the rabbis. It's a minhag. It's a custom. It's something that our ancestors just decided to do because it was convenient at the time. And as long as it's still convenient, there's no reason not to continue doing the minhag. But today, in our modern times, kitniot has become decidedly inconvenient. It's not convenient anymore just to put the kitniot away with the chametz because everything has kitniot in it. Because corn, for some reason, is kitniot. And everything has corn syrup in it. And everything has corn syrup in it because our government subs... All right, you be quiet or I'm going to make you chug a two-liter bottle of Dr. Brown's. Now add this to the fact that the definition for kitniot is so fuzzy, we're not even sure what it is, and you've got a minhag shtus on your hands. A stupid custom, and minhag shtus should be abandoned. I mean, look at the way they keep adding things to the list of kitniot. It started out with just beans and rice and lentils, and then they added corn. Why corn? That doesn't even make sense. Corn is native to America. It wasn't known to the Jews at the time when the minhag got started. Ah, but corn is similar to a grain, and so it's kitniot. That has nothing to do with kitniot. That wasn't why kitniot got started. It doesn't have to do with whether it looks like a grain, it has to do with whether it comes in contact with grains or not. Doesn't matter, it's similar to a grain, so it's kidney oat. Alright, so I guess that means that potatoes are kidney oat too, right? No, no, potatoes aren't kidney oat because the Chaye Adam specifically said that potatoes are not kidney oat because they're native to America and so they weren't known to the Jews at the time when the Minha got started. But corn is native to America, it's so it shouldn't. Ah, but corn is similar to a grain. Then it corn potatoes. It, well, at least peanuts. Peanuts aren't kidney oat, right? Oh, I'm sorry, peanuts are kidney oat. No, no, that can't be right. I distinctly remember when I was a kid, my mother went to the store to get Kaisha Pesach peanut oil because it couldn't use the corn oil. Now, nah, they made it kidney oat. But that's, that's in my lifetime. In my lifetime, something went from being not kidney oat to being kidney oat. How can we base halacha on this? Oi. Well, at, le at least quinoa is still, is still not kidney oat, right? Uh, that's the new thing. They want to make quinoa kidney oat, too. But they can't make quinoa kidney oat. It's the only grain-like thing that we have left. Ah, but that's the thing. It's similar to a grain. So are potatoes. Ah, but potatoes are Native Americans, so they weren't known to the Jews at the time when the minhag got started. But so is quinoa. All right. All right, so 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 I guess what about what about coffee, coffee beans? I guess those are kidney oat too. No, no, coffee is okay. Coffee is not kidney oat, but it's a bean. Well, technically it's not a bean. It's actually a berry. 
Right, so what if it's not a bean? Corn isn't a bean, quinoa isn't a bean. Why is coffee not kidney oat? Because Maxwell House prints Haggadahs. Ah, I see now. That's right, corporations are involved. It is now officially a conspiracy theory. All we need now are aliens. Aliens, aliens, anyone? Aliens? I heard that the pillar of fire that led the children of Israel out of Egypt was really a UFO. Then again, I heard it on the History Channel, so probably not true. That works. I'll go with it. Well, I wouldn't be much of a folk singer if I decided to take up a cause without singing a song about it. So here goes. It's Passover time and the Jews are all free. God has redeemed us from slavery. And so we celebrate the Egyptian defeat by adding to the list of foods we cannot eat. That sounds like a great idea. Well, God forbade us from eating chametz. So we eat matzah made by Manischewitz. That wasn't enough for our fathers, so it seems. And they also decided that we can't eat beans. What the hell, our kidney oat? We only got a gist. That's why we keep adding more foods to the list. But I won't conform till my dying day. They can't take my quinoa away. Well, it started with lentils, beans, peas, and rice. You'd think that those foods alone would suffice. But then they took corn and peanuts from meat. But coffee got spared thanks to corporate conspiracy. And aliens, what the hell are kidney of? We only got a gist. That's why they keep adding more foods to the list. But I'll not conform till my dying day. They can't take my quinoa away. Now they want quinoa, next will be potatoes, then celery, then carrots, then cabbage and tomatoes. Jews of the world, we must take a stand before we're reduced to eating nothing but sand. What the hell are kidney oat? We only got a gist. That's why they keep adding more foods to the list. But I'll not conform till my dying day. They can't take my quinoa away. So this year at the Seder, to God we will pray. No, Abba Tazuli, don't let them take quinoa away. Well, I hope you enjoyed that, and Chag Kosher V'Sameach, and I hope to see you next time. Oh, and if you're one of those guys who keeps gebrochts, you don't even get to talk to me. Now listen, I could sit here and tell you that Rav Moshe Feinstein says that you're not allowed to add to the list of kitniot, but that's really skirting the issue. The real issue here is that Rabbanim do not have the authority to legislate concerning minhag. Minhag is one of those things that's organic, it evolves. Sometimes new minhagen get made, sometimes old minhagen get abandoned. It's the way that things have been done in Judaism for thousands of years. If quinoa becomes kitniot, it'll be because Klal Yisrael says so. Not because the rabbis say so. Eat quinoa on Pesach. If we keep eating it, it cannot become a minhag that we don't eat it. Ah, oh, this tastes like drek. Aye, make it kidney for all I care.